I didn't think we were going to have a video tonight. We had lots of lightning storms here this afternoon, but here we are. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, July 26th. Tomorrow, being Thursday, I've got my live streaming event, Me and Taylor. We're there every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, for one reason, to talk to other investors about stocks they're interested in. I share stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to tell me what you would like me to look at. Now, hopefully you'll bring us a hot stock, but we'll look at any penny stock you got. I'll go through the information, Taylor will go through the charts, and both of us will give you our opinion, whatever that's worth. Now, we're only there for an hour, and I can only look at so many stocks. Not that we have a lot of people, but still, we're getting more stocks than we can sometimes look at. So, to guarantee yourself a spot, I put up a placeholder for the video at about 2.30, and you can actually drop your comment, drop your ticker in there then. That'll give me a head start to actually find the information. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursday. Now, what we like to do in this show is focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks on any market that are under five bucks that have potential to make us money. Now, when I look for these hot penny stocks, I normally do my research by looking at the charts first. I'm looking for charts that have heat. Once I find one, then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst. Well, I didn't get to do that today because of the lightning storm. I got to do my morning activities as normal. This is when I do a lot of due diligence and research and post information all over the internet. In the afternoon, I do my due diligence looking for stocks to share with you. Well, that got totally obliterated today. So I've had to depend on my due diligence from this morning. So these did not come from chart hunting. This is just heat I found out there. But I think you'll like what I got. First stock we're going to take a look at is Gamer. G-M-E-R, this is Good Gaming Inc. Her chart, well, it just happens to be the perfect type we're looking for, the atypical breakout chart. And she's in the midst of a breakout right now. And she just had big news come out. So it's a perfect time to be looking at Gamer. So Gamer finished today at just about two and a half cents with a little over 26 and a half percent gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We like this, it's the better tier. It's better because they have to audit their financials. That's good for us, good for them. It makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. Speaking of trustworthy, they've got both those green ticks we're always talking about. Look for these if you're trading OTC penny stocks. These green ticks represent a lot of important validated information. And that's the problem with the OTC. A lot of information is missing. So if you get validated information, you're ahead of the game. So what does Good Gaming do? Now they tell us here that Good Gaming is an innovative brand leading the gaming industry across multiple segments in the space since 2008. That's a long time. Beginning with our roots as a collaborative space for gamers to share their knowledge. We went on to establish ourselves as one of the leaders in hosting Hearthstone tournaments. In 2016, we expanded our reach to include establishing multiple Minecraft servers with some of the most popular versions of Prison and Skyblock, then developing our own completely custom developed NFT blockchain game called Micro Buddies in 2021. And it was a smashing success. And it's still very popular. And this is what they are growing with right now. And they are expanding it in a very big way right now. And that's what the news is all about. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that took a nice jump. Going from 100,000 to 1.9 million, that's 19 times her normal volume. Share structure for the company. All right, assuming these numbers are right, and they were just updated June 9th of this year, our outstanding share count is about 115 million. Insiders, management, hedge funds, institutions, they own about 17 million. Subtract the restricted shares from the outstanding, that gives us our float, roughly 97 million, if the numbers are correct. Financials, nothing to brag about for sure. At the end of 2022, they had $9,000. We got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers here, but they lost almost $3,000. Now, they've got lots of news about expanding this game out there, and I would have thought they were generating revenues from it, but obviously they're not. 
Now, the piece of news we're going to look at today, they do talk about expanding their market, and they say they are going to be making money by selling upgrades in their game and these nfts can be resold and anytime an nft is resold they get a royalty off of it so they have plans of making money we just don't see any of it here yet quarterly it's really the same thing last quarter of 2022 they did four thousand dollars with the loss of a hundred thousand first quarter they did three thousand dollars with a loss of 125 thousand something's got to change real fast here Disclosures for the company. We've got 18K that came out here today, and it is all about the news. So that 8K goes with the piece of news that came out today. Going back a little ways, I am back here to November of last year. This is when they relaunched MicroBuddies. They had made some improvements, relaunched it, and it is still doing very good. Now, February seems to have been a very busy month for this company. We got three pieces of news here from February, and we're not going to dive into any of them. They're just expanding their business. Good Gaming to launch its first extreme game mob wars for advanced players as Minecraft and Roblox continue to experience rapid growth. The company signs development partnership agreement with Marquee Studios BV for new Minecraft and Roblox games and explores AI technology integration for games in 2023. I think AI in games would be very interesting. No two games would be the same. They'd always be different, right? That's what I'm thinking. And that last piece of news in February, the company creates publishing vertical and signs agreement with Joshua, Joshman901, McKetrick, to create additional revenue opportunities in the online gaming space. So they're making more deals and they are expanding, which is really what this piece of news is all about, but it's a big expansion. Good Gaming and Vio One Services announced multi-year strategic partnership for integrated mobile games featuring Web3 integration. They tell us here, that this partnership will deliver cutting edge mobile gaming experiences to the assist wireless and in touch wireless customer bases, which are operated and managed by Bio One Services. Now, would you believe that this assist wireless and in touch wireless are associated with the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission? They tell us right here that assist wireless and in touch wireless offer free mobile phones and discounted wireless phone service to qualifying consumers through the Lifeline and Affordable Connectivity programs administered by the FCC. This essential service provides low-income consumers with access to both a mobile device as well as essential communication services. Assist Wireless and N-Touch Wireless will initially preload up to 15,000 phones per month with the goal to exceed 100,000 phones per month for good gaming series of mobile gaming apps as they are released. They tell us down here that there are over 2.5 billion active users in the gaming industry and annual revenues of more than $98 billion. Mobile now accounts for over 50% of the global gaming revenue. Because players in Web3 games are free to sell and trade their in-game assets with each other with their characters, collectibles, skins, and more because they're all NFTs, we can monetize various opportunities in the Web3 gaming space, which has experienced over 2,000% growth over the last 12 months. When we talk about 3 billion gamers, 90 plus percent of those are on mobile. Having Web3 games not just be on the browser or on a client download, but really reaching the market is where it is, on mobile. This is really important. So they're going to be expanding their gaming to 15,000 phones, up to 100,000 phones every single month. And I've got to believe this is global. So sooner or later, the, the revenues have got to start coming in. But right now, still, the chart looks hot and looks like it's ready to run. So forget about the long hold when they're going to make revenues. Let's just get into this for some quick gains. Let's do some charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You get this free when you sign up with TD Ameritrade, and that's free too. So we are looking at Good Gaming Inc., ticker GMER. This is a one-year, one-day chart. 
We were here before on September 20th, just after she started to jump. We caught her at four cents. Over the next few days, she hit a high of almost nine cents. So we had like 225% run there. From there, she has been falling for a very long time, hitting a low of 1.6 cents in June. Looking at our six month, four hour view. We're at six cents six months ago. There's our low bubble. And as you can see, she has been going sideways, just sticking to that 50 day SMA, hovering over her 200 hole, which a lot of penny stocks have been paying attention to here recently. And on today's news, just today's news, she ripped. She jumped here from uh, almost two cents up to 2.7 cents. And right now she's at 2.5. Five cents, keeping most of her gains. Oscillators are very strong. Every single one of them is pushing up very strong right now. RSI is in the overbought at 71. 20 day, one minute. Under the 200 all this time until today. That's when she broke out from all of her SMAs and she's ripping. She hit a high of 2.7 cents and she is floating on her nine day SMA, but she's pulling away real fast from that 20. She gets too far away, it's going to be like a rubber band. It's going to snap back. So you got to keep an eye on that. You can see the volume was very strong at the very end of the day. It was climbing all day after that big shot in the morning. And at the end of the day, we had the most volume we had. Looks like we had 153,000 shares in the last hour. Oscillators are still brilliant. All of them are pushing up. RSI is up at 67. I'm liking the one hour chart too. Five day, five minute view. So really all you've got to look at is today. She had a nice bounce pre-market. She then took off, came back down. It looks like she wanted to bounce off of her 50 and she just launched from that point. She had a little bit of pullback at the end of the day, stopping at 0 0.025. Oscillators show a little bit of weakness, but come on, this is looking good. And it was the first pop. Now that doesn't guarantee we're gonna get extra run tomorrow. But things are looking good. It's worthy of watching. G-M-E-R, it belongs on your watch list, at least for tomorrow. This next stock we're looking at, penny stock from the OTC, very curious to me. She's got a lot of hot characteristics, but she's not a perfect candidate. But that's to be understood. I didn't have as much time today to go through as many stocks as I normally would. But I think you're going to like this one. This is J-R-O-O-F, J-Roof. This is Jericho Energy Ventures. Now she's got a perfect chart. I mean, it is an atypical breakout chart that looks ready to break out. She's already come up over the 50 and she's right up to that 200. She just needs a push. Well, we had a big piece of news come out on July 13th. They did multiple joint ventures and they're working in the hydrogen sector which I think is going to be huge. I think it's going to dwarf all the other energies. Ultimately, it will be our mainstay. That's my opinion. So I'm thinking right now is a great time to be looking at J-Roof. She finished the day just under 23 cents at 22.8 cents with just under 5.5% gains. She is on the pink tier. She's current and she's got both those green ticks we're always looking for. So they tell us down here that Jericho Energy Ventures is an energy company positioned for the current energy transitions, owning, operating, and developing both traditional hydrocarbon joint venture assets and advancing the low carbon energy transition with active investments in hydrogen. Our wholly owned subsidiary, Hydrogen Technologies, delivers breakthrough patented zero emission boiler technology to the approximate $30 billion commercial and industrial heat and steam industry. Jericho also owns and operates long held producing oil and gas joint venture assets in Oklahoma, which it is currently developing from cash flows in an effort to further increase production into the highly elevated commodity price environment. So what was the relative volume around the company today? <laughs> Not exciting. She dropped from a mere 6.3 thousand down to 4.1 thousand. Can we say she's under the radar? Share structure for J-Roof. No clue what the float is. Outstanding share count is up near 250 million. We know our float won't be over that. Thank God. Looking at her financials. E-gads. Those are more than just a little outdated. 
Our annual only comes up to 2014. Let's hope for better on the quarterly. No, 2015. But don't you worry, none. I was ready for this. I pulled up their financial information over here at Yahoo Finance. Now, pre-COVID, they were doing really good. They had $237 million in 2019. We know it's millions because they tell us we got to add three zeros over here as well. Then they dropped hard. In 2020, they did $55 million. Started picking up in 2021 to $60 million. But what happened in 2022? They fell down to $23 million. Now, yeah, they're still making good money, but they were doing a lot better. Now, the news that just came out July 13th that we're going to take a look at, I think it's big news, and I think it's going to create a whole new revenue stream for them. And I find that exciting. Looking at the disclosures for the company. We don't have anything here since 2022, so let's just bounce on into that news. Now, the news here is all current, and that's good because I want to focus in on what they are now doing. We've got two pieces of news that came out in June. The first one here says that the company and Ramp Equity team up to bring innovative zero emission hydrogen boiler technology to South Korea. Then the one at the end of June tells us that the company subsidiary H2U Technologies announces hydrogen industry's first commercial scale non-iridium PEM electrolyzer. Now, I read this, and I really don't want to try to explain it to you, but they have found a way to make hydrogen easier with a different type of electrolyzer, and it's very cost efficient. Then comes the big news that came out on July 13th. Let's focus in on that. They tell us here that Jericho Energy Ventures, Exogen Hydrogen Solutions, and Softinter Group announces European Industrial Partnership. The three companies are pleased to announce a strategic industrial partnership to manufacture, implement, and service an innovative new hydrogen steam plant. The HSP 3000 is a breakthrough zero emissions hydrogen powered steam solution for industrial steam and thermo applications. The plant comes pre-assembled in container size units and ships by road transport. Each HSP 3000 installation is expected to permanently eliminate the CO2 equivalent to about 5,000 cars. That's huge. Because of its pioneering design, the HSP 3000 requires no smokestack or hazardous emission management systems. The only exhaust of the plant installation is clean water which is ready for circular use with electrolyzer systems, further enhancing its positive environment impact. Again, I can't go into the technology here, but they've got a hydrogen plant that they are selling in pieces that they're putting on trucks and sending, and then they assemble it, and voila. And anybody who uses this is going to be cutting down on CO2 so much that they could easily qualify for tax credits and actually be making money. I find this very exciting. As I said, hydrogen to me is going to be the mainstay in our future. You can get hydrogen from anywhere and you don't have to dig a hole in the ground to do it. Let's go take a look at this chart now. Up on J Roof. <laughs> we are looking at J Roof, ticker J R O O F. This is Jericho Energy Ventures. It's a six month, four hour chart with our high bubble being in December at 39 cents and falling to a low in May of 15 cents. When she hit that low bubble, she bounced up to the 50 and positioned herself on the 50. A little under it, a little over it, but she's been hanging out on the 50. And then in the last few days, she decided to move to the 200. She has been pushing herself and she is right up underneath it at 22.8 cents. All of our SMAs are starting to turn up. Volume was low today, no doubt about that, but our oscillators are strong. Our percentage price oscillator is pushing up just like our MACD with lots of green bars. RSI is warm at 60, and we've got a nice setup here between our PPO going up and our ADX trend continuation going down. This line changes when the trend changes. So when I see my blue line going up, and my red line going down, guaranteed 100% your price is climbing. So the charts and the oscillators on the four hour look pretty good to me. 
looking at our 20 day one hour view. As I said, she was going sideways on this 50 as well on the one hour chart. And then three days ago, she started to push up and she hit a high of 22.8 cents and she stuck right there, hasn't even pulled back. She has got strong oscillators. All of them are still climbing and we've still got our pattern on our PPO and our ADX. Coming down to that five day, five minute view. Well, <laughs> that's beautiful. We got a low in this corner of virtually 19 cents and a high up here at 22.8 cents. And she's climbing, climbing, climbing. All of the oscillators are doing the same thing. This is looking good, folks. She's got everything she needs. The news is a little old. We could use another piece of news, but I think hydrogen is hot. And when they come out with a big piece of news, this thing could run. J-R-O-O-F. Yowzy, yowzy, yowza. Did you ever think you'd see Rolls Royce as a hot penny stock? Yeah, it is the same Rolls Royce that makes the luxurious, expensive cars. Well, at least they used to. They don't do that anymore. They sold that part of the business off a while ago. Now they work with industrial equipment. They make winches, propellers, airplane engines, really big airplane engines. Matter of fact, they sell a ton of them to China for their Airbuses. They make a lot of money from China. Now we looked at this company back in March and the reason we looked at it, the charts hadn't quit rising since September. And I can say that to you again, the charts have not stopped rising since September of last year. I like this for a long haul. She is just growing and growing and growing, but we keep getting good solid pops out of her too for short holds. So I'm liking the stock all the way around. So Rolls Royce finished the day at $2.40 with almost 22.5% gains. And would you believe she's on the pink tier of the OTC? And she hasn't got any of those green ticks either. How surprising is that? Now they give us a lot of information here. I'm going to let you read that. I basically told you what they do. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she's definitely under the radar. I mean, she did about six, seven times the normal volume today. That's good. She was doing 52,000 shares a day for the last 30 days. Today, she did 382,000 shares on big news, and she had 22% gains. Share structure for Rolls Royce? Oh, man. I don't know what the float is, and I don't want to go look. Outstanding share count, 8.3 billion shares. I can guarantee you the float's going to be in the billions. I don't know if it's high billions or low billions, but it doesn't matter. It's in the billions. Speaking of billions, let's take a look at their financials. We have nothing here, so let's jump on back to Yahoo Finance. They did a good job for us last time. Looking at 2022's financials for them, they did $13.5 billion. Don't forget, we got to add three zeros here as well. That is an increase over 2021 and 2020. And the revenues are what the catalysts are all about. They've only got one piece of news that came out here recently, and it is about their first half year's revenues. Way better than they were anticipating. The company had an unscheduled trading update for the first six months of its financial year. The update saw the company revise its underlying profit target to 660 million to 680 million when originally they had said they'd be doing 328 million. That is double. They tell us down here that the British multinational aerospace and defense company also upped its free cash flow guidance to 340 to 360 from originally only 50 million. The company also raised its full year guidance for underlying operating profit to $1.2 billion to $1.4 billion from originally $934 million. So everything is growing faster and faster. As I said, folks, this company hasn't stopped growing on the chart since September. And with news like this, we're making more and more money. I don't see why they would. Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's take a look at this billion dollar corporations chart. This is Rolls Royce, ticker R-Y-C-E-Y. -E this is a one year, one day chart. This is when the downtrend ended and the uptrend began. September, 
She hit a low of 71 cents here. She has been growing all of this time with a nice surge here in February. She popped from 130 up to about 190. And since then, she's calmed down. She's been going sideways at just an ever so slight incline. She started to get some heat a few days ago, and then today she just exploded. Looking at our six-month, four-hour view. Perfect chart. <laughs> Perfect. We got 90 cent low in this corner and the high of 239 we hit today. She has been climbing this entire six months over the 200-day SMA. Most of it over the 50-day SMA. She has been going sideways here for about 20 days. And as I said, here recently she started to take off. But today is the only day she had any increase in volume. There was no change in volume before, no buildup. Oscillators are looking very strong. PPO, MACD are climbing hard. RSI is clear up at 87. Looking at our one hour chart. Not a whole lot going on here. She hit a low of $1.75, but was just going sideways, knotting together all her SMAs into a big rope here. She started to push away about five days ago and looked like she was going to fall again. And then the news came out and poof, she just exploded. Osculators are still very hot. Everything is on fire and still pushing to the moon. Five day, five minute. <laughs> Look at these little turf steps. Looks like little turf grass there, and it's just going up a little bit at a time. That's what I said. Then she came underneath the 200, probably like a cat getting ready to pounce, crouches down, and then boom, launches. And that's what we had. Aw, and isn't that a shame? All those gains happen pre-market. This is a pink on the OTC. You and I cannot trade it pre-market or after market. Brokers can, marketers can, maybe insiders can, but not me and you. So, had you been in this before, great, you made out big time. But as it was, she opened up here at $2.34 and she closed at $2.39. A whole whopping nickel. Oh, what a bummer if you got in right there. Now, she has settled right on top of her 50-day SMA, looking like she doesn't want to come down. She has held all of her gains but one penny. Here's that 200 way the heck down there. So I'm presuming she's going to be doing a lot of sideways waiting for this 200 to catch up or she's going to fall. So I think she's going to go sideways because this is on an incline and she is sitting on it strong. So that could take a whole day before this hits the price. So I wouldn't expect to jump initially. But I'm looking at this for a long hold. Seriously. I think the company being in aerospace now isn't going to be going anywhere. Their revenues just keep getting bigger and bigger and their chart has been growing since September. So I'm liking Rolls Royce. But do your own due diligence, folks. There's a lot of information out there. It's just not in the news, but there's a ton of articles. Go to Google and put in Rolls Royce. See what you can find. For some reason, I felt a little off kilter doing this today. I like the stocks we were looking at. The charts weren't bad either. I just didn't find them the way I normally do, as if that should make any difference at all. So I've given you some information here, folks, for some stocks that are interesting. I think Rolls-Royce is a great long hold. The other two have got good position on the charts. They're ready to break out. But please, do your own due diligence. Don't just trust everything I say. I'm human. I make mistakes. Heck, even AI makes mistakes. So do your own due diligence and convince yourself. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.